This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. <clears throat> Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight, to the blind, set at liberty, them that are bruised. The word is not thee, even in your heart, in your mouth, is a word of faith, which I preach. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart may have believe it, and the righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes it, the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV. YouTube, or other devices. On my left, Kathy Davidson, co-host. Good morning, and how are you? I'm doing well. Great. Amen. I guess you can tell there's something going on in me part of the way up or something. Amen. I've, I've been pushing stuff off. Amen. Well, are we ready for the My Girls? Yes, let's bring them out. Let's do it.
we bring a lady that lives in Byers, Colorado, or near there. What is that, a thousand miles or so away? Come in. Let's bring her out and let her say hello or something. Good morning, Catherine Gurr. Good morning. How far is it to where you live, Amir? I think it was eight or nine hundred miles. Well, you can tell how close she is. <laughs> right. Amen. <laughs> and you know, you were reading the other day, or we talked about it the other day, about how far your authority reaches. Well, it reaches eight or nine hundred miles. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine in Colorado, right? Everything's well. It's heating up today. Kind of feels like Texas. Okay, I've got the know. How's Richard? Doing well. Busy. Good. Busy. Um, I don't hear from him much. I think because he's busy. <laughs> How tall is he now? He is six, two, or three. I know he has grown up since I met him. Amen. We had supper together this weekend, so I appreciated that. Well, a man, he's, listen, he better not forget his mother. No. And he won't. He, no, he won't. He kind of thinks he has to look out for me. <laughs> you see, I'll never forget my mother, my dad, my sisters, and you. Amen. Appreciate you being part of us. We'll come back if the Lord directs us, okay? Amen. Thank you. Thanks. Katie. Yes, sir. Now, you mentioned last night. Are you talking about in the morning hours? Yes. Okay. Well, that is night. Yes. It is dark. And <clears throat> what goes on? Yes. So, I guess you would like for me to tell you. Well, I would like you to do whatever you are supposed to do. Okay. Well, you know, I had <clears throat> an attack by Satan on my soul, my psyche, in the night. I think it was four o'clock or so in the morning, telling me that I was dying. And I had certain symptoms in my body corresponding with the lies. <clears throat> And, as usual, I start praying. Amen. Amen. Now, it was not just a small attack. It was going on in my body and manifestations indicated bad stuff. And I'll be honest, I thought, well, if I've got to die, I've got to die, but I don't want to. And then something happened. You know what happened? God reminded you. God spoke to you. Right. Out of your heart. Right. Yeah. A word that he gave me. Amen. December the 13th. Amen. Shall I read it? Yes, please. It says, I am here in person to save you, for you are my brother. That was December 13th, 2017, by a tongue, uh, tongue and interpretation. Is that good? Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you, it just, just seconds, 
I thought, why well, can't I solve my cares on you? That's what I said. I can't solve my cares on you, Lord. But he's here. Amen. To help me. Amen. To save you. Yeah, to save me. Now, I want to tell you, I have a, a young brother that's been struggling. Struggle, struggle. David Brown. Amen. And I believe his struggles are connected to mine. To some degree. I got you. You follow me? Yes, I do. Not all. Well, what we spoke yesterday where Paul said that the afflictions that are left of Jesus are for you, what he's suffering. Right. Right. So, I thought, if Jesus is here to help me, to save me, in Plano, Amen. well, while he's here, he can get David Brown. Amen. Now that was kind of ornery. But I have to have compassion and love for David Brown. Amen. And a lot of other people. Amen. And there's a, a spirit that's not holy that doesn't like me, it doesn't like you, it doesn't like him. Amen. So, David, just know Jesus is in Plano. Amen. And he knows where you live. Amen. And he doesn't stand outside the door. He just comes through the wall. Amen. Now, that was a, that really encouraged me. Oh, by the way, it wasn't long. I started saying, well, I cast my cares on you, and I don't think I'm going to die. I you, believe why well, I started jumping up and I down. It, 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 I want to share a verse that... Um, Let's see, where is that? Yeah. It's 1 Timothy. Oh. Yeah. It's 1 Timothy 1, 18, because you've taught us this, but you, you have a perfect example of this this morning. And when I first came here, I didn't realize what, what place prophecy and tongues and interpretation have. But in verse, uh, 1 Timothy 1, 18, it says... Paul speaking to Timothy, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that by that thou by them, those prophecies, might war good warfare. Amen. And that's what God did with you this morning. Amen. You were in a tremendous psychological war. And what did God do but minister one of the prophecies? tongues and interpretation to you and with that prophecy you overcame what was attacking you Amen. and and was it jesus says um or is it saying it's in i think it's luke 4 4 he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god that's right and you took that word that he spoke to you and you overcame that attack Live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's right. Amen. So, I want to encourage David Brown. Jesus in town. In the city. Reach out. He's right there in your house. Amen. He's right there in you. He 
knows where you live, David. You know, I was greatly blessed earlier last night by a report I heard on David Brown. And, and it's something he needed to talk about. I don't know if he knew what, but he called his mother and his father, and he, he started talking. And you know what he noticed? Peace. Peace. Amen. Within him. Amen. Would somebody look the last first verse of Jude and see if Jude didn't talk about peace to us? Amen. Amen. Anyway, they'll get it. I may be wrong. But peace was with David. Guess what? There's a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Right? That's right. What did Jesus say when he was raised from the dead? He said, my peace I give to you. Right. Peace. Like a river. Isn't that Philippians 3 or 4? Four? Four. Philippians 4. Amen. Peace that passes all understanding. And David Brown has been in a real war. Now he's talking. Uh, and it was a peace conference. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you need him. And he starts saying, I got peace. Sure. And he's, he has not had a lot of peace lately. But we're getting there. That's right. We're, we're getting there. Amen. Now, as you and I talked earlier this morning, you brought up something about a song. Oh, yes. We were talking about uh, early on in Water of Life. Right. And I said there was a, a day, um, I think it was, it had to be either the late 80s, early 90s. And there was a group of us here. And one night you were just, you said, I just want to see what I have in my congregation. You were looking for something. Yeah. And you had... You asked several to come up and sing. You were looking, frankly, you were looking for faith. And, and what God, and I remember, yeah. You're not kidding. And I remember, um, I told you, the reason I remember that night is you looked at me and you said, oh, Kathy, come on up and sing a song. And I've had years of music. And I came up and I started singing and and. And I, just because you have years of music doesn't mean you can sing. And I noticed right off the bat that I couldn't get in key. I mean, I was slightly off, and I know that. And, and I was kind of like rolling my eyes going, how fast can we finish this song? Amen. And it was funny because when I finished, you said, well, you, you know, you said, that's not, that's not it. But you looked at me and you said, Kathy, God's got something for you, but I don't know what it is. I never forgot that because that was the first time God said that to me. Amen. And you had somebody say that to you, too. That's how the conversation started. Oh, yeah. But then after me, Doyle had Holly Ferguson come up. And he had her sing. Amen. And I can remember distinctly because it taught me a lesson. She requested a song. We had the tape for it. She started singing, and at first she struggled for, oh, probably about, in, in, you know, like I said, music, probably about 20 measures she was struggling. And then she kind of slid into it, and she settled down, and she, she had a beautiful voice. 
And it was a real blessing to hear. And when she finished, Joel said, Holly, when you, you know, you started out not, he said, but you could hear when you got in faith. You could hear when you got in faith. And you could. You could tell right when she got in faith and that song just lifted and she ministered to all of us. And you, you, she had faith. Amen. You know, you said I had someone tell me something. Yes. But they didn't know what it was. I was in Benton back in the 70s at a full gospel meeting, which I attended. And the speaker was a home builder from Oklahoma City. He's about my age. Uh, and neatly dressed, well dressed, clean cut. I'll never forget he had on a, a gray shirt, button down collar, long sleeve. and black trousers, very nice looking person. He said to me, would you come up here? I got up, walked up there. He said, God has something for you, but I don't know what it is. And what year was that? Probably 74, 5. Amen. Long time ago. Amen. Did you know that man exhorted me? Amen. Something? I don't know what it is. You know, Derek Friends, Derek and Lydia were just good friends of mine. That's all there was to it. I did not agree with discipleship at all. I knew it was wrong as soon as I heard about it. And I told Sherry Taylor that in Hollywood, Florida. Sherry said, Doyle, you know, so and so and so and so is doing this. I said, I don't care. Who so and so and so much is doing this? It's not God. Amen. Did you know that was in 72? Amen. I knew it by the Spirit. They didn't. The devil had deceived them. Now, but Derek really wanted me to go with him. He told me once, maybe twice, take my messages and go preach them. I said, no, no, that's not going to work. He finally quit saying it. I remember one day he was praying with me. I tell you, his face was under great stress. His soul was. I could tell he was deep into his soul. He couldn't get any answer. Finally, he said, I don't know what to do with you. I've never met a man like you. And I don't know what to do with you. And I said, thank you. Now, I know what I'm going to do. Amen. And Derek Prince, he's with Jesus. He said, Father, bring this man in to a wide place. Where am I at today? I'd say four corners is pretty wide. Four corners? 
look at the earth. See, Derek had a part in my life. It just wasn't to follow him. Amen. But that prayer has come true. Amen. 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 You know, anyone that, that has a lot of, ex that, that has a decent amount of, of a walk in the Spirit knows you cannot teach another man's sermons, another man's messages. That's right. You can't. That's right. It has to come out of your own heart. That's right. Did you know that I think is the 22nd of what? May? That the Lord said, I've chosen you sent you to the four corners of the earth to deliver my word without fear or despair. I think it was May. Was that May or September? Let's see. It was May 22nd. Yeah. I've chosen you, sent you to the four corners of the earth to deliver my word without fear or without despair or fear, saith the Lord of hosts. Did you know that was May 77 when Derek prayed that prayer? Amen. And May 17, 2017, right? Right. The Lord sent me. When did, when... When was it that the Lord told you that your ministry would cover the earth? Oh, back in the early 70s. Okay. Before you even had a ministry, right? Good Lord, yes. I didn't know I had one. Amen. You know, how I used to answer him, if this is you talking, <laughs> you bring it to pass. Can you imagine talking to Jesus or Jehovah if this is you? And they let you get by with it. Amen. They, let me tell you, they will meet you where you are. Amen. Did you know that? Amen. Can you believe that? Amen. They will meet you where you are. And not only will they meet you, they will bring you out of there. If that's their purpose at the moment. I remember once the Lord said, Oh Lord, this is years ago. Oh yeah, we're going to get to the scribes. I got it ready. Yeah, okay. Uh, Years ago, years ago, and man, thank God, <clears throat> I've lost the spirit. Yeah. Huh? I just lost it too. I was right with you. Well. All right, so we won't say it. If we don't know it, we're not about to say it. But let's talk about... The scribes? What? The scribes? The scribes and the Pharisees? The I mean what? The scribes. The scribes. I'll read it. Matthew 13, verse 51. Jesus said unto them, Have you understood all these things? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then he said unto them, Therefore, every scribe, which is instructed into the kingdom of God is like a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Amen. And that's what we're doing today. Do you know that? Amen. That's really amazing how I lost that in the spirit. And not only that, but I lost it right with you. Yeah. It just disappeared. It was something God said to me. Amen. Amen. 
They got it bad. Not time to deliver. Amen. It bad. Thank God. Praise God. They got it bad. Thank you. They got it bad. Amen. What time is it? We it is eleven thirty-two. Eleven thirty-two. What would you like to do? What would you like to do? Well, I'm going to call for a song. All right. If you don't do something. Well, I'm with you. Now, there's a man that God sent to Water of Life Church because I asked him to. But you know what? What I asked him to do was his will. Amen. <laughs> Chico Holiday, I said, man, I'd like him to come to Water of Life Church. The next day I got a phone call. Amen. And said, would you like to have Chico Holiday at your church? I said, when? Yeah, you know what? I said, let's bring him on. So I go to the radio station. 1600 AM. I believe it was Bob Wilson was his name. Amen. And I said, I want to get 10 spots advertising Chico Holiday at Water Black Church. Okay, I bought them. I didn't do that much advertising. And when they're over, I had to take something back to him. I went to Bob Wilson. I went back to his radio station, 1600 AM, and he said, <clears throat> by the way, you're supposed to be on radio. I said, I am? Yes. On my station. Oh, really? Uh, and how often am I supposed <laughs> to be on your station? <clears throat> he said, uh, daily. I said, do you have any daily spots available? Yes. And who, 14 minutes, and who are they by? Who do I follow or who follows me? And the man is from Atlanta, Georgia. First to a Baptist church, and and that's I can't even remember the man's name. I love to hear him talk. We're having a struggle in the spirit today. Yeah. Hey, Anyway, I uh, was placed right beside him. Hey, Ben. You know, I found myself next to Shambop. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hagen. Copeland. <laughs> I don't know if they like me, but I sure wasn't afraid to preach beside them. Amen. 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 Now, Bob Wilson had a word of God in him. Amen. And it was for me. Amen. And I went on, and 90 days later, I went on in Irving, a Jimmy Swagger station. And right after that, I went on KJOJ, I think it was, in Houston. And Jimmy Swagger and uh, 
another one of Jimmy Swaggart's. I forgot where it's at. Three of them. Isn't it amazing how you flowed so well with Jimmy Fla Jimmy Swaggart stations? Say that again. How well you flowed into Jimmy Swaggart's stations. I was on eight of them. Amen. I didn't even know he had stations. I didn't either. But I got a phone call from Toledo, Ohio. From a person that managed Jimmy Swaggart's station. I believe that's right, Jimmy. If I'm wrong, I repent now, and I'll be glad to take your correction. But this man had been listening to me on radio. He wasn't a manager. And he said, uh, Brother, God wants me to be your agent. Oh, he'd cry. Wow, Holy Ghost is here. I said, if God wants me to want you to be my agent, he'll tell me. He called me back the next week. Brother, God wants me to be your agent. He'd cry. Holy Ghost is here. Three weeks. I finally said, look, friend, you don't need to call me back. If God wants you to be my agent, I will call you. Man, Man. oh, Lord, this is old. Yeah, this is, this is fun. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead, this is fun. Yeah, I fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm beginning to like it. Yeah. And so somebody else wanted to be my agent. Every time I turned around, somebody wanted to be my agent. And, you know, they wanted 15. I was going to say 15% off the top is why they wanted to be your 15%. agent. 15%. And I paid cash in advance. That's right. So, uh, 1600 AM, moved to Plano. Wow, this is coming out of the old. And a man managed it that put Kenneth Copeland on radio. I forgot his name. Man, we are dropping names and yeah, things. Dropping names, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, he called me and talked to me. And one day he called me and he said, uh, Doc, would you go to lunch with me? Sure. Where are we going? And we had a steakhouse. It's closed. Amen. Steak and ale. Steak and ale. He said, let's go there. So we go over to eat. And, and I tell you what, he was a good friend to Hilton Sutton. He was on Hilton Sutton's board. That's what it was. And we go to lunch and we talk. And we were there an hour and a half. And he turned to me and said, I'm going to tell you something. You don't need an agent. You're a businessman. Amen. I said, thank you, sir. I never saw him again. You know, when, when I was on radio, and I, I think it was the Indiana station, I called them up to find out times and such and you knew the man on there and he's and he was talking to me and I said oh and by the way Doyle Davidson is my agent 
And he started laughing. You did. <laughs> Amen. He said something about, I had a good agent. And by the way, how many 15 percent do you owe me? <laughs> Oh, no. I charge about 15% at those 4 a.m. phone calls or those 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> meetings, too. <laughs> oh, no, man, anything but love. <laughs> hey, man. Goodness, is this fun? Amen. I mean fun. Thank God. You know, you have a wonderful testimony that always ministered to me when you were on radio. Because, and, and it was noticed in the Christian community how fast you moved in radio. And it wasn't long at all that you had like 20 stations. That's right. And you were ministering your program. We were, you know, taping it from here. I think we were taking it from here by then. Yeah. But um, then there wasn't money to pay those bills. Right. And they started stacking up. Yeah, they did stack too. But you knew you had to be on radio. Yeah. And I remember this testimony very well. You uh, one day went into your office. Kathy Mai was helping you in the office. Yeah. And you told Kathy Mai, go get the go get the folder that has all the invoices for those radio stations that we owe. Oh, that's right. It was well, nineteen thousand. Yeah, folks. nineteen thousand something. 17,500. Okay, 17,500. I knew it was close. And she brought you the folder, and you held that folder up. I think you're right. It was 19,000. I thought it was 194, 196, something okay. like that. I Sometimes yield, I have a good memory. That, that I yield to you. Yeah. And you held that folder up, and you said, Lord, I just want to thank you. What was the rest of your prayer? <laughs> I held it up. Bold as I can be, I want to thank you for the opportunity to owe this much money <laughs> for radio bills. Amen. Amen. That was my prayer. Amen. Amen. Guess what? The next day, I come in and Kathy Davidson, my said, Dad. You better look on your desk. I will pretty soon. Dad, you ought to go look on your desk. I went in there and there's a $20,000 check. Amen. Oh, man, maybe I need to pray for this opportunity. <laughs> what a blessing. Oh, yeah. And not only that, it proved to you that you needed to be on radio. Yes. That you were obeying the Father. I'll tell you who told me. I went on radio as fast or faster than anyone they ever heard. Amen. And he's the man that put Kenneth Copeland on radio. Amen. And he said, Copeland might have gone quicker than you. But I think you've gone quicker than Copeland. Amen. Now, hallelujah. Hi, Kenneth. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Now what are we doing? I'm watching you. Well, I think we've got to go where I might have started. What time is it? We have four, uh, 15 minutes left. How much? We have 14 minutes left. Okay. Let's bring on Chico. Holiday. The law of the Lord. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. He's my friend. Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. 
The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey. In the honey cold, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey in the honey. Gold. The fear of the Lord is. Enduring forever The judgments of the Lord are true And righteous all together For to be desired Are they that go Be a much fine goal Also than the honey in the honey cold. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. My strength. And my redeemer, for to be desired, are they that a much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey in the honey? Sweeter also than the honey in the honey cold. Amen. Amen. Several inquiries. How do you get Chico? Well, it has to be God. And somebody about there like, I sure would like to hear him sing some more. Well, let's put him on the wings of a dove. When trouble surrounds us, when evil comes, the body grows weak, the spirit grows numb. When these things beset us, he doesn't forget us. He sends down his love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above. Love. 
but many days he searched for land in various ways troubles he had some but it wasn't forgotten
they said to themselves, there, that should take care of that. But it didn't. What's that I hear? I still hear the music Day after day That song goes on For once you find Just can't help it. God gave the song. Come on and join. It's the song of Jesus. Day after day, that song goes on. For once you should be showing up, Catherine Courier from Byers, Colorado. Hello again. Oh, again? <laughs> hey, man. You know you've been with me 10 years? Amen. That's right. On 10 years. Both of us have grown a bit. We haven't, we haven't got a day old. We're just kids. We're just kids yet. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you got anything you'd like to say? No, except this. Uh, you talking about Chico Holiday? You know, I read a little bit about his life, and really, really pretty interesting. He was kind of similar to your life. Um, really at the top of his game as far as the music industry and God intervened, obviously had a plan for his life and it's really remarkable and like you said, just God that he joined you two up together. Amen. Thank God, Chico's in California. Amen. I love to hear him sing. He does have a beautiful voice. You know, he ministered in Las Vegas. He was a he was a Las Vegas singer. Uh -huh. He was a Las Vegas singer. Yeah. He had his own record company. Right. He was getting very popular. Right. And then he ran into Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And you know what? He had the humility to lay that all aside. And then he started singing for Jesus. But he did. I appreciate God sending the water of life. Amen. And then Didn't you go to lunch with him once and uh, another gentleman and uh, Chico wanted that other man to listen to you, what you had to say. 
Chico came here to speak a second time, and he brought a, a local person from a big church with him. And that big church has fallen apart. But we were at Cheddar's eating a meal, and, and I was talking, and the guy with Chico said, I thought you said this guy was square. And Chico never even looked around. He said, just listen to him. <laughs> so I kept talking a little bit what troubled him. I dealt with, <laughs> and my square came out. <laughs> so I've had some great times with these people. I've been with them a lot, but Chico was just someone I happen to love the guy. But I love his music. I love his voice. Amen. Catherine has done God knows how much writing, no. research, uh, for me, how much history she's brought up. She found things about me I never heard of. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, she's, I guess, pretty much the author of the things written by my, what, eight great-grandfathers? Katie's done some? They yeah, we cer certainly a group effort. Sure enough. David Kasparite, did you know I learned all about all this after I couldn't see. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to somebody, I'm going to finish this and shut up, uh, yesterday about my mother. I said, Mother is one composed woman under pressure. And then I said, You know, her grandmother was a cowardman signed up as a prophet, prophet, private, ended up as a sergeant, went from Michigan and was mustered out in Georgia. And that was my mother's grandmother. I'm going to say one more thing. I've always got one more thing to say. Uh, my grandmother was a burglar, four foot eleven, auburn hair, a thousand kicks. And I used to go to her and granddad's house every summer when I was in elementary school, spend a week at a time, normally go twice, but many may Berkler would say to me, Doyle, that war, that civil war was horrible. It was horrible, terrible. How does she know her father-in-law was a private and a sergeant riding horseback, coward. And he survived it. 
He survived. Not all I did. Amen. No Miller, you and I, went to his farm. Amen. He's been dead a long time. Anyway, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, be multiplied unto you to the knowledge of God and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless. See you next time. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.